Okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, electrostatic potential energy. Um, it is also uh, the written as U. Um, the potential energy or the electrostatic potential energy is defined as or actually any potential energy is defined as the integral of f dot dr where f and dr are vectors um, this uh, you might have studied in uh, uh, work work power and energy energy um, this is the definition of potential energy basically so in 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 our case um, f vector and now I'll call it a vector because indeed force is a vector um, till now I wrote it as uh, without without a vector without the vector sign um, so um, the force vector is um, according to Coulomb's law is given by k q1 q2 over r squared and if you want you can put a unit vector r roof um, or r cap whatever you want to call it uh, it just shows that uh, the force is the, in, in the same direction as R. So, um, so in our case, this will be the integral of this thing, K Q1 Q2 over R squared D, oh, sorry, R roof dot DR, right? Um, for most cases, I'll assume that F and DR are in the same direction, so the dot product uh, will be 1, right? Because if two vectors are in the same direction, the angle between them is 0, so the cosine of 0 will be 1. So It's not a theta, but cosine of 0 is 1. So the dot product becomes just a normal product. So we can just neglect that. So we get that the electro electrostatic potential energy equals um, now um, k q one q two um, are, are, are all in the uh, are all constants, right? So I can just uh, take them out of the integral. So this becomes k q one q two times the integral of what was it 1 over r squared r roof dr now as I said um, if this is r then a small small vector which can be added on top of this but I'll just write for simplicity I'll write it here. This is dr, and its magnitude is almost negligible, but its direction is the same as dr, right? Oh, sorry, r, and r roof is also in the same direction, but it it has a magnitude of one. So we have two vectors, r roof, which looks like that, r roof or r cap, and dr, which is a small, small, small vector way smaller than I have shown and this is dr so you can see that they are in the same direction so the uh, actually the um, dot product of these two vectors are defined is defined to be r cap times and this is a times not a dot times the magnitude of dr times the cosine of the angle between these two vectors and in our case this is the theta is 0 so cosine of theta is 1 so this term here is 1 so this is just r roof times dr and r roof's magnitude is 1 right so this is just dr so all of this stuff comes out to be k q1 q2 times the integral of 1 over 1 I'll write it in a different color 1 over r squared times this thing which we figured out was just dr and you can see that uh, this goes from the integral goes from r1 to r2 maybe 
or x1 to x2 whatever so this comes out to be and and this has to be a definite integral because in physics indefinite integration doesn't make too much sense so uh, if you remember integral of 1 over r squared I've done it many times you can watch my mathematics playlist if you want just for review uh, the integral of 1 over r squared is negative 1 over r minus 1 over r minus 1 over r and now we have to put the limits and limits as we, uh, we defined is r1 to r2 so this becomes I can take the minus sign out so this is minus minus k q1 q2 times and in, in the brackets we have in the brackets we have um, we put the upper limit we get 1 over r2 and I put the lower limit we get 1 over r1 all right now um, um, okay so now let's go back to the basics integral of f dot dr where was it yeah here the integral of f dot dr is just the work done uh, from uh, in bringing a charge um, let's say it is uh, this here is q1 and q2 which is let's say very 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 far away at infinity we have q2 or let's say just at, at some random point we have q not necessarily infinity right so let's say it, it's it it is here so this distance here is what we define to be r1 and this distance oh sorry and then let's say that the this this charge comes now here this charge is now here so it got displaced by some amount and let's say that this distance here is r2 and that's what we define right now um if these two are uh, of both the same sign then there's a repulsive force so i i'd have to do some positive work right you can imagine that um, maybe there's some friction maybe uh, I'm just talking about uh, real life things if there's friction you have to do positive work right you have to push hard um, to bring an object from one point to another so this is R1 this is R2 so this is U right I forgot to mention that this is U U is minus K Q1 Q2 over R now um, we define um, oh, let me put it this way uh, we define the potential energy or or you know uh, let me write down the definition um, this is just getting too too messy for me to explain it to you let me just write down the definition of potential energy here potential energy is defined as the work done WD means work done work done to bring um, you know let's say q2 from infinity to r2 in the presence of q1 um, I hope you understand that so if if you follow this definition then from infinity I mean that uh, in this case we have brought it from R1 so from infinity would mean that R1 is infinity right so u will become u will become um, minus k q1 q2 times 1 over and I'll call R, uh, R2 as some R, okay, and minus 1 over R1, but we just saw that R1 is infinity, right? So what is 1 over infinity? Uh, that is very tricky, but for most purposes, it's, it is 0, right? Okay, 
And I want to tell you, let me let me not confuse you. Let let me not write this as you, but let me not, uh, write this as the work done. This is the work done. And I want to ask you, um, whose work done is this? I mean, there are two forces which are doing work here, right? Uh, the one is me, who who is bringing this charge here by doing a lot of hard work, and of course there is the force force between these two charges, the electrostatic force that's also doing work, right? So there are two forces which are doing work. So which, whose work is this? Well, um, I I believe that definitely this is the work done. This is the work done by the electrostatic force. Because this turned out to be negative, and indeed, if these two charges are of the same sign, then um, and and my telling this is negative is that assuming these two are, uh, q1 and q2 are of the same sign you'll see that the definition would inver invert when we uh, change the sign of the charges okay um, so where was I yeah so this turned out to be negative right so who is doing negative work here well I am doing positive work as I said so somebody should do the negative work and I believe there is no other force other than me um, there's only the electrostatic force so that must be doing the negative work and indeed it is doing negative work because it is applying a force in that direction and q2 is getting displaced in that direction so f dot dr in f dot dr as i said uh, we get f f times dr times the cosine of theta but the cosine of theta in this case the angle between f and dr is 180 degree right this is f this is dr whoops sorry this is dr so they are 180 degree apart so theta is 180 degrees and if you've done trigonometry you will know that cosine of 180 degrees is negative 1 so this will become a negative f times dr so you get that it, uh, it does the negative work so this is the work done by the electrostatic force and potential energy we um, uh, define to be the negative of the work done by conservative forces so which implies that which implies that electrostatic potential energy and this is electrostatic will be the negative of this but this is already negative right so the negatives cancel out and you get k q1 q2 times 1 over r but i can just write it divided by r so there we have it this is the definition of electrostatic this is the definition of electrostatic potential energy for system so um yeah this is this also um is very interesting and and you can uh, notice one thing here um we said that the let me see yeah the force let me do it in a different color the force force is k q1 q2 over r squared right and now if uh, you can see the this this relation here i mean um if you multiply one r on both sides in this equation then you get f times r will be and this r will go out right there's, there's only one r but this is nothing but the potential energy, right? K Q1 Q2 over R. So R times F is U. So this is indeed dimensionally correct because R times F is the dimension of work done and work done has the uh, units of joules and so does energy. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it for uh, electrostatic potential energy. And this will come in very handy when we work with capacitors, etc. But you'll see we don't um, uh, use, use th this particular definition but we derive some other other definitions so this is the basics of electrostatic potential energy and we derive one more property which is called electro electric potential which is derived from uh, electrostatic pot potential energy and and uh, this this uh, includes the same trick as we derived electric field um, 
we said that uh, we we need to uh, derive something some quantity which is independent of the second charge i mean it's like it's the fundamental property of the initial charge so in this case also you can see that um it is dependent on both of the charges so why not we define some quantity uh which is which seems like a fundamental property of just q1 i mean if we, if we consider the same case as we had before uh, in the last video that we have a fixed uh, charge which cannot move here we have a charge here q and we have a charge here, here q then uh, and and this distance is r and let me call this q1 and this is q2 so you can see that uh, it is easy to easy to find electrostatic potential energy it's just kq1 q2 over r but what if i define some quantity which is independent of q2 i mean it, it seems like it's the fundamental property of just q1 it is it doesn't matter whether you bring q2 or minus q2 or some q3 q4 anything but that that property right there at, at a distance r from q1 will not change for any q2 q3 or q4 so i think i gave you all the idea to i guess you can derive it now right now um, you, you just say uh, uh, use the same logic that I used to derive electric field. So you will see uh, a lot of uh, relations between um, the four properties which we have done so far. Um, actually, three we have done, and I'll do the fourth one in the next video. But you can see the relation between force, electric field, and electrostatic potential energy. And I hope I didn't confuse you too much with that electric word because there's a lot of electric going on here and as well as potential so yeah i i hope you like it and uh, I'll, I'll derive that for you uh the put electric potential how we how we get to that property there um i'll do that in the next video so i hope you like it thank you very much